over time, the threat landscape has changed, so you're dealing with a very well-funded, very highly motivated attacker that's not using traditional methodologies. They don't want to just bring your networks down. Matter of fact, that's probably the opposite of what they'd like to do. They want a tiny little piece of code that sits in some of your most important places on your network that you'll never see or hear about, and it's going to mine data that's of value to them or the outside world. Let's look at some of the statistics. We're faced with some really bad stuff happening today. Every 14 seconds, according to Sophos, an, an industry leader, has identified that websites are, or certain websites are identified to have malware embedded in them. We know from Gartner that 75% of all attacks today are targeted with very well-funded, highly motivated folks that are not being caught by traditional security methodologies. So we ask ourselves, how do we protect ourselves from what we don't know? And the answer to that is a technology we refer to as whitelisting. It allows you as a customer to define your known good environment in anything outside that. Spyware, spamware, malware, antivirus are not allowed to execute because they're not on that list of known good. Really putting you in control of the security of your network or your data protection. I think there's a real shift in our industry taking place that says too much is being missed that the current technologies only focus on the known problems and where they fall prey is to the new, very clever, silent type of attacks that they don't know about. They can't stop them because they're not built to do that. Blacklisting was built to deal with a problem that the industry was facing or corporations around the world were facing a few years back. It, today, the threat has modified itself and it's different, and whitelisting is probably the most appropriate method for dealing with the risk today. We're absolutely the first in the industry to move into the whitelisting space. We've been at it for several years now. We're very well deployed across the globe in all kinds of different sizes of enterprises and government installations. So we've got a lot of experience in the best ways of deploying and managing the technology. I don't know of an enterprise that we've run into around the world that doesn't have servers or endpoints that are risk, at significant risk, and they should not be using whitelisting at least in a part of their network deployment. Um, and is it costly? No, because if you're really running whitelisting on these devices, it obviates the requirement to be running a more traditional methodology. So you really should be pulling from that same budget. There's no sense to whitelist a mission critical server and still be running antivirus, anti spyware, because they can't load and run on it in the first place. You've heard people who lead information security companies talk about whitelisting being the future. You've, you've heard corporations talk about whitelisting being in their buying future. I'm here to tell you that whitelisting is here today. It's usable, it's deployable, and it makes sense. It can protect you from risk that you face every single day and don't need to. Is it right for every device in your network today? Maybe, maybe not. But I guarantee you within your network, you're accepting risk you don't need to. And we're here to tell you it's here today and you can deal with it.